Well, good evening. <laughs> so I'm just going to geek out for a minute here. <laughs> Look at the picture. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, what we're going to do tonight is uh, we'll have a, a conversation. I've got some questions here of what's uh, at least uh, come to my mind that I'd love to have the opportunity to ask you and other people who have been asking me questions since they've learned to have the opportunity to do this. Mm -hmm. And then we'll open up the, uh, to the floor for questions um, from you all as well. Um, so we'll keep this fairly light and somewhat casual. So I, I think just to start, um, one of the things that uh, you know, has always amazed me is I think you've written, what, over 25 books now? The About that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the majority of those having to do with science and science topics. Um, and I, so uh, as a question, why? <laughs> why, why, why? Why do all put all this work and all this effort into general uh, uh, science books and science information for, for the general lay audience? I enjoy writing. I'm a southerner. <laughs> I, uh, uh, we tell stories. I mean, we love telling stories, that's all. And, uh, no, I write. I write easily, and I also uh, am in subjects of science that have a broad interest. I've also had the ambition to move biology, particularly evolutionary biology, you know, which is at the outer fringes of the natural sciences in the direction of the social sciences and humanities, to move what, that closer to those other two great branches of learning and see if we cannot have some sort of dialogue, a colloqu colloquy across the great branches of something that hasn't been achieved. So I've always had that ambition. And so how, hmm. how close do you think you've come? I think that we're beginning to do it, and not through my efforts, but rather through the advance of the biological sciences, uh, in, uh, particularly in that direction, and the studies of the brain and the studies of uh, human evolution and uh, indeed even the studies of uh, the aesthetic and moral sense through neurobiology. Uh, in fact, those are, the, those are the subjects that I put heavy emphasis on in uh, this book, the aforementioned book. So uh, that's, uh, you know, some fairly heady stuff there, everything from, you know, where we all come from to the idea of moral sense. Uh, these are sort yeah. of big, very, very big, big topics. Mm -hmm. um, to be they are the topics. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in many ways. So, uh, and so uh, at the heart of most of this is, is evolution. So I'd love to know, what's, what's, your, what's your one sentence definition of evolution? Uh, well, it has, like most heavily used words in a language, particularly English, uh, several meanings according to context, because we all know it as something as any uh, gradual change occurs from one state to the next. And then biology, it means uh, a uh, genetic change in a species or a population that uh, leads from one state to the other. Whether or not it is adaptive, and we believe that as a practically a law of biology, natural systems see evolution occurring through natural selection and therefore it is adaptive. But then the technical definition of it the geneticist is a change in the frequency of genes within a population. So what do you think the um, major points of confusion in terms of the general public would be? But there's certainly, uh, you know, as you say, it's a word that's been used in a lot of different contexts in a lot of different ways. Um, yeah. it's, certainly in, in, it's certainly been broken its way into kind of general, kind of general language in, in its own and to mean a bunch of new you connotations. You want the general one. Oh, well, that would be, I think, uh, the worldview held by uh, uh, everyone except fundamentalists. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, I, so it, certainly in your new book, um, you have uh, taken on an issue that's, um, uh, or put forward a position that certainly has engendered some response yet again. Uh, in terms of it, your approach to looking at where this idea of altruism comes from, where does yeah, uh, it's always been one of the big questions of biology. Uh, but uh, since my life, my research life has been devoted primarily to uh, the social insects, which are the most advanced, uh, have the most advanced social systems, 
granted, all driven by instinct of any uh, non-human animal. And then, because my interest spread to humans, uh, when I set up the discipline of sociobiology in 1971, it was actually, uh, I had to include humans and took a lot of heat for that. <laughs> so uh, my interest in uh, humans, uh, by necessity, had to increase. And I have taken a greater interest. And I see, for reasons aforementioned, that uh, we are getting close to bringing the great branches of learning together. And that can be probably the most exciting intellectual development of this century, is to see a continuity of cause and effect explanation, a mutual understanding across those great branches. Uh, then I just was drawn into it. I'm interested in evolution as well, and the emerging story of human evolution, the African story, the pre-human uh, biogeny of, of humanity, especially now that we can begin to attach it to changes in behavior, led me to uh, want to take what I knew about social insects and about what happened when they became, they achieved this world-conquering state. And you know, it is, it's just a tiny number of species reach what we call new sociality, that is, uh, EU with sociology, that means true sociology, it means, that's just a term, but what it means is that it's uh, uh, producing societies that have the vision of labor, persist over uh, the uh, multiple generations, raise young cooperatively and have a division of labor which is based at least to some degree in altruism. I discovered looking at the social insects, well, I and other colleagues did, that uh, there's something like 20, two dozen, just make it round it off a little bit, times in the history of life that uh, youth sociality has been reached. It's a very rare condition, and it was very slow in coming throughout the Paleozoic era up until uh, about 250 million years ago. There was not a single case, even though there were the large populations and faunas of insects of all kinds in the coal forest. And then when we got into the age of, of dinosaurs, there was nothing that we can see any sign of for a good long while. And finally, we got things like termites and ants appearing. And in good time, uh, when they appeared, these rarities on the earth, uh, on the land part of the earth, uh, took over the world. They took over the invertebrate world. They, um, ants alone outweigh vertebrates in most habitats. All the vertebrates on the land, mammals, birds, reptiles, and amphibians, outweigh them four to one. That's an amazing fact. And of all the vast insect mass, biomass, you know, the weight of insects, uh, the um, ants alone make up, uh, even though they only have a tiny fraction of the species, about one third of all the insect biomass. That's ecological dominance. And the termites have about equal influence as what you do. And of course, we all know what Homo sapiens is like. <laughs> the first, this is the first big animal eusocial uh, species. And I, I will go to into it now or later, but the astonishing fact that biologists have not noticed in answer to the puzzle, which they had not considered, the one that I just stated, the rarity of it, uh, the long time it took to appear, this advanced state, in addition to never asking that question, they never looked at how it happened. Uh, in arguments about the theories of uh, genetics of altruism that have raged, uh, that was overlooked. And so I decided to simply look and call attention to what actually did happen which we can trace, particularly through those eusocial species. Not just insects, but there are marine creatures too. And it's happened always the same way, the same time, all 24, no exception that we're aware of. And it consisted of a, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's accidental. Evolution is accidental in the sense that each step is a uh, confluence of what's available to evolve, what traits are there to start with. And the particular